So let's go over 7 and 8 real quick. Okay, I know that most of you have all the answers already written, but let's make sure that they're all correct. We want to make sure that our work is correct so we're studying the right thing, right? Okay, so what equation did we use for number 7? So we used f of x equals 1 half to the x power. Okay, so what x values did you choose? Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, those are good values to choose for this problem. What did you fill in? 0 is 1 because anything to the 0 power is 1, right? 1 is pretty simple because anything to the first power is just itself, right? Can you square a fraction? 1 half squared is just 1 half times 1 half, right? So we multiply across the numerator and multiply across the denominator. So I get 1 fourth, right? Something to the third power is just that number times itself times itself, right? Well, so 1 eighth, very good. What about negatives though? Okay, so here's what happens. 1 half to the negative 1 power that whole fraction is to the negative one power, right? So it's one to the negative one power over two to the negative one power. Things to the negative power do not want to be where they are. The one is in the numerator, it does not want to be in the numerator. It wants to be in the denominator. When I move it to the denominator, the exponent is not negative any longer. The 2 does not want to be in the denominator, it wants to be in the numerator. When I move it to the denominator, its exponent is not negative anymore. Well, what is 2 to the first power over 1 to the first power? It's just 2, isn't it? Now, what's another way to look at this? 2 to the first power, isn't that just the reciprocal, excuse me, the negative first power, isn't that just the reciprocal of this? Okay, so I get 2. So what do you think negative 2 is going to be? 4, and what about negative 3? 8, okay? So let me plot that real fast for you. And if you haven't plotted it, go ahead and plot it now. Does yours look like that? It should, if it doesn't, okay? Can I connect them? How do you know? It has the function given, and so I know it is continuous, right? What's its domain? All real numbers. So negative infinity to positive infinity. What's its range? It can't reach zero, so y is greater than or equal to? Okay, so just greater than zero. Okay, so what does the inequality, or excuse me, interval notation look like here? So zero to infinity, but this time is this a bracket? Good, it's just a parenthesis this time, isn't it? Okay, now I need to add something here. It may or may not be something that you understand yet, but I need you to realize that we're going to be using this worksheet all year and referring back to it all year, and you're going to want to remember this later, okay? This has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Okay. Now again, I know you don't necessarily quite get the concept of asymptotes yet, but we're not there yet. I just want to have that written down. We did talk about it a little bit yesterday that if it, there's an asymptote there, can this cross? Can it cross over here? No. Okay, it's going to get closer and closer to it, but never touch it, right? Okay. Um, any questions about number seven? Okay, then what about number eight? What equation did we use on number eight? 
2 to the x, right? We chose a b that was greater than 1. We chose it as 2. Yes, sir. Oh, can I can I do that in just a second? That's a good question. I was let me wait till um, the second. Okay, what x values did we choose on this one? Same ones, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. What? Oh, it is. Okay, well that's that's convenient. But let's make sure we understand. Two to the negative third power. It wants to be 2 to the third power. We move that to the denominator. 2 to the third power is 8, so that's 1 eighth. Okay? So 1 fourth and 1 half. Anything to the zero power is 1. So 2, 4, and 8. Good. Let me graph those for you real quick. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, that was, that was a little too high. Sorry about that. 1 is 2, 2 is 4, 4 is 8. Are these two similar looking? Do they look similar? Yeah, okay. What's the domain? All real, so negative infinity to positive infinity. What's the range? Y is greater than 0, so parentheses 0 to infinity. Special things. So there's another horizontal asymptote. At y equals zero and it is continuous. So tell me where is the variable in both of these equations? It's in the power, right? What's another word for the power? Exponent. So guess what kind of functions these are? Exponential, okay? But here's the deal. They still have a different name even after that, okay? They both start with exponential. But as this one is going from left to right, what is happening with the values? They're decreasing, aren't they? They're decreasing at an exponential rate, and we call that exponential decay. Okay, so the first one is called exponential decay, when b is between 0 and 1. So any guesses what it's called when b is greater than 1? Mm-hmm. I'm guessing that wasn't a guess. I'm guessing that you already knew that and just needed to be reminded a little bit. Is that correct? Good. Okay. All right, so are we good on 7 and 8? Just a quick reminder about that. All right, then let's look at number 9. What do you know about number 9? There's an x between two lines. Have you ever seen that before? No, not at all? Somewhere? In all the math books that you read, you saw it? No? Okay. It's called absolute value. Have you ever heard of absolute value before? What does absolute value mean? Anybody know? It's a distance from zero. Yes, it can. You can have a distance from zero, of zero, right? So let's choose negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and three. Our typicals, right? When in doubt, go back to your typicals. They might be wrong, but it gives you a place to start, okay? How far, let's start down here. How far is three away from zero? It's three, right? Three units away from zero. How far is two away from zero? Two. How far is one away from zero? How far is zero away from zero? Zero. How far is negative one away from zero? Can you have a negative distance? Okay, so I need to change that. Remember how I changed your comment from the other day? You said something about taking square roots and negative numbers. Remember what did I say? Not yet. Okay. 
Can we get a negative answer for distance? Not yet. Not yet. Right now? No, we can't. What's the distance from zero from negative one? Right, one. What's the distance from zero of negative two? Ne oh, oh my goodness, two. And what about negative three? Three. Okay, so just to be clear, when we get an answer that's negative when we're doing a problem about distance, the negative is still wrong. Okay, still can't really have a negative distance, but an, we might get a negative answer and the answer will make sense when it's time. There's some more foreshadowing. Okay. All right, so let's plot these points. Negative 3, 3. Negative 2, 2. Negative 1, 1. 0, 0. 1, 1. 2, 2. And 3, 3. Oh my goodness, it's a V, almost if this was called absolute value. Might that help you remember what absolute value looks like? Okay, can I connect them? Yes, how do you know? We're given a function, so we know it's continuous, right? What's its domain? All real numbers. Somebody else tell me its range. Are you sure that it's greater than or equal to zero? Good. Be sure. Y is greater than or equal to zero because I have zero as part of my domain. Uh, excuse me, part of my range, right? So it's a bracket zero infinity. Not like these ones up here, because these ones up here, it never gets to zero. Right here, it is at zero right there, isn't it? Okay, any questions about that? Anything else on special things? It looks like a V. So can, on special things, can I write that it's linear? Is this half linear? Is this half linear? Is it a linear function? No, it's not, is it? Silly. Okay. Any questions so far? Look at number 10. Have you ever seen that before? Maybe in a calculator, and that's the only place. So as a result, there's no way that you can do this in your head. For goodness sake, I can't do most of these in my head. I can do some of them, but I can't even do all of them in my head. So quickly and quietly send one person from your group to go get calculators for your group. You have 10 seconds. 10. Nine, eight, seven. Uh, hey, 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 Cho choose them from the front, please. Not the side, from the front. My fault, I didn't tell you. I don't even know what number I was on. Seven. Oh, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Two, one, zero. Okay, so everybody had a calculator in front of you. Okay, I do not know how familiar you are with these calculators. So for right now, I'm going to treat you like you're not familiar at all. Okay, it's been a while even, so it, but if I get going too slow and you guys need to, for me to speed up, somebody raise their hand and politely, according to our social contract, kindly tell me to speed up. Fair? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is turn it on. Oh, I can go faster than that? Okay, so once it's on, I need to create a new document. Okay, I need to go home, not to your actual home, but the calculator home, and I need to choose new document. Guys, we're going to choose a new document every day. We're not going to do our work on Scratchpad. We're going to do our work in the documents. Does everybody understand that? 
Anytime it says, do you want to save your document unless I tell you otherwise, which I probably won't, the answer is no. Because then I start with a brand new fresh document. Okay? What kind of document do I want to start with today? I, I need a graph. I can either press the down arrow or I can literally just press the number two and it'll start, it'll give me a graph. Now, log base two of x is how I read that. Okay, log base two of x. So, do you see the log button? It's in yellow right above the 10 to the x power button. So I've got to press control 10 to the x power for log to show up. Now notice where the cursor is right now. It's down below, it's in the place for the base. What did we say the base is of this problem? A two, enter a two. How do I get the cursor to come up here in the argument? I put the right arrow. I can't just start pressing X because it's gonna stay down there in the base. So then I enter an X and I hit enter. Now, what we're not gonna do is be like, okay, I think it's about right here. I don't know, guys, we have a table. We can fill in the table and then plot those points and know exactly what the graph looks like, can't we? Do you remember how to get to the table? Very good. Control T helps us get to the table. Okay? Now, the same way as we chose Y's values before, I still want to choose Y's values now. I don't want to just bam, 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 put the first five values that are there in my table. I want to choose ones that make sense. Okay? Now I push the up arrow because I want to, I like to see zero. I like to see what's going on around zero. Okay? And even for this case, I want you to push the up arrow one more time. Or even two or three because I want you to see what's happening in negative numbers. What does it say for negative numbers? Error. But what does it say for zero? Undefined. Those two things mean something different. Okay? They mean the same as in we can't graph anything there, but they mean something different for us. And right now is not the time to talk about that. So right now, I just need you to trust me that they mean something different, okay? I wanna have negative one and zero on my table so that I know something weird is happening around there. But we're gonna talk about that when we get to the logarithms unit in this school year. Can you trust me on this one? Okay, say again? No, no, let's put something specific in the Y's. What should we put in the Y for negative one? Error. And what should we put, not Aaron, error, sorry. What should we put in the Y's for zero? Undefined. Now, do you remember getting an undefined for another problem that we did? Look back at number six. That was an error or was it undefined? I think we wrote down error and we should have written undefined. What happened on number six? What was there? Do you remember? There was an asymptote, okay? So undefined, I'm not gonna say always because I don't know how to do all the problems, okay? But most of the time for us, undefined is gonna mean an asymptote is there, okay? So what other X values should I choose here? What would be Y's X values to choose? One, because one is zero. I should also choose two because two is one. Should I choose three? I mean, could I choose three if I wanted to? Yeah, but look at four compared to three. Oh, that's so much nicer. Does that mean it's okay that we're scared of decimals? No, we're not scared of decimals. We just don't want to write them all down, right? Is there any other values that I should choose? Oh, eight, okay, eight is three. Is that a good amount? Do you think we'll get a good picture of our graph? Well, let's try it. What can I graph at negative one? Nothing. What can I grab at zero, graph at zero? Nothing. So at one, I get zero. At two, I get one. At four, I get two. And at eight, I get three. 
So is that what my graph looks like? Well, if I press Control T back on my table, do those two look the same? Like this part does, right? But look, this has this little thing right here. What did we say was right here at zero? An asymptote, right? So I know that this keeps going toward that asymptote, but is it ever going to reach it? No. Now do they look the same? Yeah. Okay. So what about the domain? Any ideas on the domain? Very good. Here's what she said. X is greater than zero. Does it get to zero? No, we already said that it, it's undefined there, right? So it doesn't get to zero, but it's everything greater than zero. So what does the interval notation look like? So zero to infinity, and you want to specify a parenthesis on each end, don't you? Very good. What about the range? Mm hmm Because how far down does it go? All the way. How far up does it go? Does it just look like it goes to 3? Maybe kind of it does, right? You might see how people could get confused. But as it's going to the right, where else is it going? Up. Okay? So all real numbers. So negative infinity to positive infinity. What kind of special things do you want to write? Oh, it is continuous. Very good. What else? I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Oh, it has an asymptote. Yeah, so let's write that. What kind of asymptote does it have? We can even be more specific, can't we? What direction is this direction? It's up and down. It's also called vertical, right? So vertical asymptote. When we get there, we'll talk about where exactly that is. You know where it is, but we'll, we'll worry about that later, okay? Anything else you want to write? Is it a curve? Okay, good. Are we good? So what's it called? Uh-huh. L-O-G-A-R-I-T-H-M. It's a logarithm. Look at 11 and 12. What are 11 and 12 called? Same thing. They're all logarithms, right? So wait, on... 7 and 8, one was called exponential decay and one was called exponential growth. Do these logarithms have different names? Not this time. Okay, not this time. What's different between 9, or sorry, between 10, 11, and 12? The base. Okay. Do you think the base is going to really dramatically change what the graph looks like? So that's something you're going to figure out, right? So you have a couple minutes for the bell rings. Your assignment, your homework, is to do 11 and 12. Here's what I want you to keep in mind. If you have the table, can you graph, do the domain range of special things at home? So instead of starting at number 11 and doing the table and doing the graph and doing the domain and range of special things and then going to number 12, might I recommend that you do the table for both of these first? Because once you get these done, it doesn't matter where you are. You can finish the rest of it, can't you? But you can't really do these tables without a calculator, can you? Okay? Before I really let you go all the rest of the way, we need to talk real quick about 12. What's the base of number 12? E. I know that you've been told your whole life that E is a letter. That's because it is. Okay? But in Algebra 2, we use E to represent a very specific number. When we get to logarithms, when we're studying these more deeper, I will tell you what that number is and show you. Okay? But right now, I need you to realize that if you're putting that in the calculator, don't use this one. This is the letter. We're talking about the number E. 
which is right here. If you use this one, when you put it in, let me show you what's going to happen. Okay, if I go over here and delete the base and try to put in an E, what is it? Oops, I pressed the wrong button, I'm sorry. If I try to put in the E, what is it asking me for? It's asking me for an exponent. I just want an E. So if I just want an E, what exponent should I put in? A 1. Okay? Then when you go look at it, when you look at the table, everything is correct. All right? Any questions? Sir? Okay, so if there's only two or if there's only one, you might have to put some decimals in. Some of the, some of the, uh, choose an X value that has a, a decimal as a Y value so you get a better picture of what the graph looks like when you graph it. Okay? It's okay to choose decimals if there's not enough whole numbers. That's all right. Okay? Any other questions? Three, three places always, if, unless I tell you any different. Three places is perfect.